Mock exams for ACCA SBL for the upcoming sitting December 2023 for the NC Tech company will be very, very important. But it is not just important to predict what may come up in the actual exam, because as I said in the previous recordings, if I'm the examiner, of course I'm not the examiner for the SBL, I can set many and many scenarios and then I can ask different requirements map into the syllabus of, of the SBL. But what is more important to attempt the mock exam is to have your tutor to review your exam quality, uh, the answer qualities to make sure so you can further improve that in the actual examiner. So it's very important to recap on the basic exam technique that I commonly share to my SBL student in my class. Firstly, this exam is 195 minutes, so this means that 3 hours and 15 minutes there. And what you are required to do firstly is to go through the pre seen material before the exam, and then on the exam date, as you can see on my screen, that we have written the latest mock exam tailored to the NC Tech company. Oh, and of course, the mock exams are included in our pre seen package, which you can find it on our company's website. So for example, in this exam, we have written specifically three questions. For example, 32, 40, and 28 marks there. So as the first step, what you are uh, needing to do will be to plan the deadline, okay, for each of the requirements in turn. So because you've got 195 minutes in total, okay, spread that over 80 marks, Okay, so it will give you how many minutes per mark. And then you will be timing by, for example, 32, and then 40, and so on. So that tells you exactly the duration of uh, when you should complete the task 1, 2, 3. And in the exam nowadays, that we've got 20 professional marks, and make sure that you're ready for that. We'll go through that later on, no worries for that. Now, in this mock exam, Firstly, I've written several exhibits, for example, the exhibit number one, and then the exhibit number two, and then the exhibit number three, okay, about the principal risk, for example, this is the uh, external cyber uh, attack, okay, uh, onto the NC Tech company, and finally, it's the exhibit number four, so we are given the NC Tech performance report. Now, before we move any further, let me ask you a question. What is the aim of the SBO exam? Option A, to solve practical problems in the business world in a practical and accurate manner. Or B, to solve the practical problems in the business world with reasonable answers. So my answer may be disappointing many students that the aim to study the SBL, of course, we need the skills and techniques and knowledge to solve practical problems in a practical and an accurate manner. But I have to tell you that my option for this question would certainly be B. It is simply because under exam pressure, just having 3 hours and 15 minutes okay, in there, I don't believe that anybody on this planet will have the ability to solve a very high level strategic problem in an accurate manner. Because when we make strategic decisions in the company, so we need to plan that, for example, having discussions with our key management team members and, and, and directors and, 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 and test it and, and, and to consult with external experts, it may take months or years before we can formulate the strategy uh, finally. So this means that, so does the SBO exam. We never expect student to give an absolutely accurate answer, but you will need to pass the exam. You will have to provide reasonable answers for that. Now, what do I mean by reasonable answer? Firstly, have the knowledge necessary for you to pass the SBO. And of course, you may have seen for example, uh, you've studied the SBL with the approved learning provider, with the approved study tests, and also you can see the syllabus, you can see the examiner's articles. I think 
this will be absolutely enough okay, for you to know something related to the business world. However, things are changing all the time. Having one particular business model cannot help you solve all of the problems in one go. So what is more important is to justify your answer. So this means that, okay, here's my point, the reasons behind it or the implications of it or the risks of it and what I advise the company should do in the short term and the longer term. So make sure that each of your paragraph or each of the sentence or each of the point at least contain one of the above that I mentioned. Now, the first exam technique I'd like to share with you is that in the exam, if you're given 10 marks question, of course, if I were you, I would like to write 10 sentences. However, I would like to write five different, completely different points. So what's the difference between points and sentences? I would say that if I'm required to evaluate the advantage of a particular option, okay, the option A, the advantage, I would say we are given 10 marks for that. I will list, for example, five advantages in there. And for each of the advantage, I will have to make sure that I will include two sentences, okay. The reason why this will be a case is because I don't believe that any student, okay, in the actual exam, if they only use one sentence to illustrate that point, he or she can have the ability to explain this point in detail. I don't believe that to happen, trust me. So this is why, in order to fully explain your point, you'll need more sentences for that. Okay, now, here's the key for that. A lot of students fail the SBA exam is not because that they are not quite familiarising themselves with the business world problems, but because of the poor exam technique. They deem this paper similar to the F-level papers. However, at this level, it's at the master level, so you're required to demonstrate your insight into your answer. So in the F-level studies, of course, 10 sentences, 10 marks, absolutely fine there. However, in the SBL, we still need that 10 sentences, but we only need five completely different ideas rather than 10 completely different ideas. So this means that the idea behind passing the SBA exam firstly is to write less but with higher quality. Less does not necessarily mean that you write less than 10 sentences. Otherwise, if you can see the marking scheme, usually it will be one mark per point. So make sure one mark per sentence, that's how the marker works uh, in the SBA exam. Now, secondly, if you can see the exhibits here, so for example, I've written the MC Tech performance report, you can see the revenue changes, gross profit margin changes, and even you can calculate a bit further the profit before tax, uh, so you can estimate even for the level of expenses changes as well, okay, by uh, taking revenue times by the gross profit margin and the difference between the gross profit and the profit before tax will certainly be other expenses, something like that. And then you are given, for example, the cloud storage capacity into TB, number of active client changes and, and so on, and revenue per client, as you can say, has decreased from last year to this year. And also you're given different KPIs, so for example, the server uptime has improved by another 0.3% there, and the client satisfaction has been increased by 3% there. You are given the highlight operational statistics about changes on the KPI explanations and also the sustainability principles, okay, related to the second part of this question. I'm not going to be going through that. So, if you can say in the requirement, okay, I've specifically written the requirement for you. Firstly, prepare a report, okay, so you are given the unseen information on the exam date. This is absolutely fine there. Uh, from my perspective, it's just to be an introductory stuff. Okay. Now, prepare a report assesses the performance in the, last, uh, in the latest financial year. Right. 
So if that's the case, then your focus should be on the unseen information rather than the pre-seen. So do I mean that you need to get rid of the pre-seen information entirely? But the answer for that is no. Remember what I said. For each point they are going to be giving to the examiner, you will need to give Thursday your point, okay, what you think, I say what, but you need to plus, for example, why, risk, implications or impact on the companies, uh, different stakeholders, and also suggestions, okay. Suggestions can be in the short term, in the longer term, short term, for example, we need to allocate more budget, longer term, for example, building a learning organisation or something like that, okay. Now, um, from the SBA exam's point of view, yes, when answering the second part, yes, you can pick one of these four into each of your sentences here so you can earn enough marks or reasonable solution there. However, when you are bringing one of these four into your answer, make sure somehow, firstly, to focus on the unseen exhibit and the precinct information. And from my perspective, a very powerful tool that we can always use in a precinct will be the SWOT analysis. At the same time, I can be using the mission and core value to justify why the business is doing this. I mean, that would be a secret because not only I teach the ACCA case study exams, I also teach other professional qualifications. I'm also the marker for a professional body globally. And uh, I know exactly the secret of passing this paper. Uh, now, when you are linking with the SWOT analysis or the mission of core values later on, you will see how marvellous that could be. Your answer quality can be greatly improved. But you don't really have to be quite clever indeed uh, in giving practical solutions or accurate solutions. But don't get me wrong, if you have the ability to do that, of course, you don't really watch my recordings or you don't really focus on these exam techniques at all because you can use the business common sense to pass this paper quite easily. I must admit that a lot of senior members okay, working in uh, the financial field for many years, they've got the ability to tackle these questions, especially for those who were studying in the UK for the master level in their university. They have sat such similar exams in the past in their university and, uh, and therefore they can pass this paper quite easily. However, for any students who haven't got many working experiences, of course, using this approach can certainly help you earn more marks in the actual exam there. So making sure that each of the sentences don't just contain what, because that will earn you no marks, but also plus one of these four. Now, if I were to comment on, okay, so firstly, prepare a report, analyze the financial results, statistics, and KPIs, and make sure that you answer what examiner has asked you about. You have to answer them all, okay? So never miss any sort of information there and explain the potential reasons and implications of these results. Okay, so I use and, and therefore I would like to explain reasons at the same time implications, or you can choose one of them. Okay, it really depends on how you interpret the question. That would be no big deal at all. And uh, we are given the analysis skill, okay, as the four marks here, because nowadays we have got the professional skills marks so um, we have got four, 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 and four marks in each of the five professional skills. So uh, I would say that <laughs> rather complicated uh, professional skills mark, but um, so why we are given these professional marks? Because the aim for that will be to force students to make sure that the answer will be linked with the case information there. So, uh, don't get me wrong, to get these professional marks will be quite easy indeed. Communication mark in the SBO simply means that you need to get the format right. For example, common format would be to write slides, uh, put the headings, and then put the description in. You will need to write a report, you will need to write briefing notes, sometimes letter or press release, okay? 
So press release, make sure that we will not use the complete, but uh, to use we do or I do and something like that. Okay, now, get to format right, very important as a starting point. Now, second professional skill, commercial acumen. Yes, from my perspective then, I will need to see your insight, which means whether or not your answer will be reasonable, or any particular excuses for the markers to award you marks. Okay, so that's what I mean by commercial acumen. So if your answer linked with one of these four, and yes, you're demonstrating you've got uh, reasonable commercial acumen skills, okay, uh, somehow, right. Uh, analysis, which means using the numbers, so making sure that you will get the numbers right, okay, in terms of calculations. Skepticism, on the other hand, you will always need to question any sort of missing information. And from the NC Tech Company's point of view in our recordings, I've just told you that something that's missing. So, for example, whether or not employees are happy working in this business, we are not particularly sure about the employee satisfaction and also the turnover ratios and, and, and something like that. At the same time, we have got large shareholders, so for example, the institutional investors, so we are not sure about their risks attitude. Okay, now, in terms of analysing potential, especially for the uh, investment opportunities later on, uh, so yes, you can always quote it if you're asked about the scepticism marks, okay, whether or not they are happy about our investments, going forward, we're not particularly sure about their attitudes to risk. Okay, so you can always quote that in the exam. And also you can also question about the uh, financial figures, okay, because it's a public listed company, but uh, uh, we are not given those figures in detail, okay, so we're not sure about that, about the expenses, changes and something like that, so in, in, in much more detail, so you can always question about that. Evaluation in the end, okay, you can always think about the pros and cons of doing something and with the conclusion or suggestion of what to do. Okay, now, if you follow these basic steps, yes, you can get very good professional marks and this is why the pathway for the SBO is very high, nearly about 50% now. Now, if I were to analyse this question, okay, so firstly, again, I will look back to the exhibit. I would like to explain to you, for example, the client satisfaction. Okay, simple as that. Now, client satisfaction, firstly, I would like to say about this. That's increased by 3%. Right, you've done the analysis because you've done the comparison with the past. Okay, but will you get one mark for simply stating to the examiner, okay, <laughs> the satisfaction rate is increased by 3%? The answer is certainly no. Okay, sometimes you'll get no marks by doing that unless you're putting a reason or, or something like that, okay, demonstrating what is going on. Now, you need to tell the examiner specifically, the examiner says, about the reason and also the implications. So, how can you? link that to the pre seen materials there. Well, the reason could be a lot of things. Why not refer to the mission statement? Okay, so firstly, I'm going to be taking you back to the mission statement there. Now, going back to the pre seen firstly, are the mission statement constantly achieving operational excellence Right, so you can use that point to illustrate what is going on there. So firstly, let's see the background information of what is going on, okay, because the exhibit uh, will be like a timeline of uh, what is going on, okay. So uh, firstly, the exhibit number one, we've got the file and business review, and uh, number two is to invest in the quantum computing. Right, because we've made that investment, yes, perhaps uh, later on we can see the satisfaction has improved. So I would say that, okay, uh, because 
or like to achieve operational excellence per the mission statement and because that we've invested in the latest technology in there from the exhibit and therefore I would say I would say that the speed to process the client's information is improved and this is why making my final conclusion that the customer satisfaction rate has improved okay now that's how I earn one mark related to it so making sure your answer not only contains the first part but also the second part and the third part but I would like to explain this into the different answer here so why not to look at core values now core values for example when looking at the ethics part we can see openness in all areas of the business of course including to the customer and this is why I would say that because we've invested something and because we are more open right if I look at the core values I use another color because we are more open to all client perhaps in terms of communication you can use the imagination okay that's no problem for that whatsoever and therefore client you will need to demonstrate your thinking process therefore the clients know our surface better so being transparent will be very key there and this is why the satisfaction has increased right so you may think okay what Steve said is very very common and very very easy and straightforward will you, I get enough marks and marks related to it but the answer for that is certainly yes because we don't require our student to demonstrate a very accurate answer in the SBO because later on I say later on maybe some of you may be sitting the APM exam advanced performance management exam the examiner will certainly require you to demonstrate a lot of insights of how to put all of these things in practice in a more accurate manner so you can get marks for that paper. However, at this level, the answer is no. So making sure you try to give an excuse to the marker to give you some marks, following the basic step, yes, you will get a lot of marks in this paper. As a conclusion here, what I'm saying is that attempting mock exam is important, but what is more important would be to have your tutors to look at your answer and to suggest what areas can be improved. So for example, when your tutor is marking your mock exam, for example, I mark the student's mock exam as well, here for APC, and I will see my student mock exam sentence by sentence. I will see exactly how students can improve on this point. So for example, rather than linking with the point from the mission statement, I would say that, okay, it will be much better to link your point with the core values or explain that in such a way. Now, my advice to the SBO student, two words, be relaxed. You have to be, be, be relaxed so you can come up with different ideas, assuming that you're working in the NC Tech company, so you can give the best advice to the NC Tech management. However, if you're only thinking about what sort of business models I need to use, if that's the case, then the quality of the answer will certainly be lowered. Right. I'm going to be stopping this recording now. I hope you find this useful. And if you want to know more about the mock exam, just check out on my company's website. Bye for now and best wishes for the SBO. APC, accounting for your future.